Hello all, so in this tutorial I will be discussing the Python based framework called Zynet which can be used for automatically generating neural network targeting FPGAs. So this uh, framework it includes all the automation that we discussed before the script which are used for generating weights and biases uh, as well as for sigmoid content etc. So I can share the git repository for the platform but the easiest way to install it is using the python package installer because this is also hosted at uh, pyp repository uh, for python distribution so you can just go ahead and install it by typing pip install zynet okay so the advantage here is uh, this gets installed in your lib package directory in your computer so you'll be able to use it from anywhere in your system the package need not be in the same folder where we are building your neural network so to really see where it got installed you can type it once again and he will show like what is the location and if you go there you will be able to see it okay so this is Zynet and this is the package okay now uh, I will show you this with an example the same example that we have been using and okay so this is an example of building a neural network using Zynet so at the top you can see like we are importing Zynet and we are also importing NumPy package and if you look at the code here you will see it is very similar to TensorFlow uh, syntax okay so that was the main motivation for building this platform because TensorFlow, you know, it is very user friendly. It's very intuitive. That's one reason it is quite uh, popular. Uh, but unfortunately, hardware design is not everyone's cup of tea. So that's why we need to give some support for building hardware based neural networks. So that was the main motivation. So you will see like this is the TensorFlow code for the same MNIST dataset. So you can see what is happening here. So here first we we are creating a model which is basically an object okay, in, in Python which represents the neural network. So here also you can see first thing we are making a model. So you just call zynet.model. After that you add layer by layer to that neural network. So here you can see this is the input layer which will be a flattened type. Here also we are adding first layer we are calling it flatten type the only difference is here you do not have to specify the number of inputs because he will automatically find it during uh, training based on how many inputs he is getting he will automatically find it out but unfortunately in hardware we can't do it so here you have to explicitly say uh, the number of inputs of the first layer okay so that's why it is given 784 because our images for MNIST are 784. After that you can see here we are adding four layers. We are specifying number of neurons here. We are specifying the activation type here in TensorFlow. Same way we are adding four layers here. We are specifying number of neurons. We are specifying activation type. Only difference is here uh, the dense layer is specified like this because they have different kind of layers. As of now uh, we support only dense layer maybe in future other layers will be also supported but it is passed as a parameter here that's the only difference and towards the end we are adding an additional layer to find the maximum value in uh, hardware itself but here the maximum value is found in software after that you can see the compile method here model.compile that is what is used for building the neural network here also you can see we are using the compile method but the parameters those are passed here are different uh, one parameter is we are specifying whether it is a pre-trained one or not pre-trained one. If you specify it as a pre-trained one, you have to pass the weights and biases uh, to this function as an array. Okay, So you remember our weights and biases uh, .txt which has the weights and biases that we generated before and this will be converted into a linear array by this method and this is also part of Zynet actually Zynet package this module so he will do it for you so we just call these two things and we pass it uh, the weight array as well as the bias array and you have to specify the data width you want to use the integer size of weight and integer size of input 
and the depth of sig point in case you are using uh, sig point kind of activation function and uh, that's it so he will build the neural network now there are a few additional features for example we have this method zynet dot make signings project he will create a xilinx project a vivado project for you and this will be the name of the project this is why in our previous examples uh, the project name was my project dot one and you also have to specify the fpga part number you want to use in this project and this part number belongs to z -board. okay and that's what i'm saying this is not specific to z -board. you can target any fpga it need not be even signing but this function works only with uh, signing okay there are other functions also so if you call this function he will package the entire neural network into a single ip and he will store it as an ip i will show you and if you call this function signer.make system he will interface that ip with our ps so you know our neural network it has a maxi light interface as well as an access stream interface okay. for sending data we have an access stream interface and for configuring and reading the output we have a axi light interface so he will interface our neural network with ps and the axi light through the gp port and axi stream through a DMA controller automatically and he will connect all the interrupt signal everything for you so that's what he's so same function uh, i'm calling here and i'm passing the data width here uh, sigmoid size here 10 weight integer size 4 and input integer size as 1 and let's try to run it so we just say python mnisinet.py and he will do it so one interesting thing is okay so he will also analyze the weights and bias file for you and he will recommend you what is the minimum integer size required for weights okay so here it is given four so that's why we pass four here you can put any value equal to or more than four that you found by analyzing this file okay so this file again if you remember you can get it either from uh, tensorflow or you can use your own software implementation or third-party implementation for getting the weights and biases after uh, software training. So now let's wait until he generates the Vivado project. Okay, so he has completed. So if you come to that folder, uh, you can see uh, what he did is he creates a folder called sources. Inside that, there will be RTL folder. Inside that, we have all those MIF files which is generated by the gen weights and bias script inside uh, Zynet. And you can see all the RTL code. Okay, so we have layer one, two, three, all the layers here, max finder, neuron value, everything that we designed before. And he also adds the test bench. Now this test bench, uh, it really makes sense only if you're working with uh, MNIST data set. Uh, it is specific to MNIST. For other things, you will have to modify the test bench. But the neural network generation part, it is generic. You can use it for any neural network. And you can see this My Project One folder. Inside that, he uh, generates the Vivado project. Now, for this to really work, uh, Vivado should be added to your system path. So, whichever Vivado version is in your path environment variable, you'll be using that Vivado for generating this project. So, you'll have to open it with uh, that Vivado version. Okay, so here you can see uh, all files are here. Under simulation file, he also has the uh, test bench. Right now, suppose if you want to generate uh, a neural network with a different number of layers, that is pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, say like uh, you wanted only 30, 20, 10, only three layers, suppose. So that is pretty straightforward. You just do like that. Now, the only thing is if you are using pre trained one, he will automatically check whether the weights and biases file that you passed is matching with the specification that you have given here. If they are not matching, he will uh, raise a warning. So here you can see like he's complaining, uh, weights do not match for for this particular layer, layer one, okay? Uh, so he will give a warning and this time it will give an error saying like this project already exists. Yeah, because uh, he's not all right. So let me comment this line out because we already have the project and let me run once again. Okay, 
let's run it once again and if you come here you will see like now there are only three layers see and he also modified this uh, include file accordingly so now we have only 30 20 10 and that output hard max so it's very straightforward now if you directly change the values here and use these weights and biases it won't work because of course these weights and biases they do not correspond to the network after modification so you will have to supply with a new weight and bias file or you just say uh, it is not pre-trained so that he doesn't use these weights and biases so if you if you suppose you modify it okay and you just say pre-trained as no here and let me comment this line also out so yeah so he will not warn you because he is not looking at that to wait and bias file so he is happy and it will be updated there so let's put back the original version and uh, run these two commands also and I will show you what really happens. So 30, 30, 10, 10, and hot max. And we say pre-trained, yes. And I will close this view out of project. And I will also delete this folder. We can add the option to delete the project if it exists, but uh, uh, I didn't add it because in case you accidentally give the same project name and you delete your previous project So to avoid it, uh, we are not using the force option when we are creating a new project That's why he's giving error if the project already exists So you can give a different project name or delete that folder which has the Vivago project and rerun It will work So let's wait until he finishes Okay, so he has completed. Let's go back and open the same project once more. Okay, so this is how the project now looks like. So you can see in addition to the previous files, we have this component.xml file, which is the IP representing our neural network. You can see, so it has a XE stream interface and an XE light interface. This is XE light, this is XE stream. It also has an interrupt signal. He also generated this block design. Now the name of that block design, uh, you can specify here. I'm just calling it to my block two. And you need to pass the project that you created as a parameter here. So these name, these two names, they should match with whatever name is here. Okay, so this is that block design. So you can see uh, we have our Zynet. So his interrupt is concatenated with the DMA interrupt and that is connected to our PS. And this DMA, this guy is used for transferring the data from the external memory to Zynet. And uh, this XE light interface, this one, is ultimately controlled by this GP0 from here. So you can see like it has uh, automatically generated on the block design everything for you along with this maybe one useful thing uh, is if you go to the Zynet installation directory so basically what happens is there is a folder called this one DB database and all these HDL files most of them they are pre-stored here and based on whatever you are specifying here, what Python does is he just copies files from there and he mainly automatically generates that include file. Okay, so that is his main job. And he also generates the weights and biases, MIF files uh, using the script that we saw in the previous tutorial. This one we have already seen, gen weights and biases. Right, so there is another file also called gen neural network. He's the one who is just instantiating those neurons multiple times inside a particular layer, things like that. So this one is the one who instantiate these neurons as many times as you specify. Now, uh, one important script here, maybe useful script here, is here uh, called this block.tcl. 
so again those who are working with tickle so previously i have shown like uh, uh, you can store your block design in tickle format now the only issue with that is if you generate the block design in a particular vivado version and someone else in a different vivado version it will give you issues because the tickle script that vivado generate it can it directly uses the specific ip version information inside the script okay so here uh, we have dma controller and our dma controller version in 2017.4 will not match with the version in 2018 because it may be a newer version so here it is 7.1 in the 2018 maybe it is 8 point something so that's why those issues happening so in this script uh, what i have done is you can see uh, i have done some modification to the script file so what happens is he doesn't use the specific version number here he just uses the ip name okay and uh, the specific versions will be instantiated based on the particular vivado which is running this block design so this could be useful to you also not only for this project for any other project so this is the script which actually generated uh, this this block design so if you are using article to generate block design this could be useful one okay so now what i will do is i will go through a complete iteration from beginning till end for our mnis data set explaining uh, what is the total design flow okay so including generating the data for verification and generating the neural network simulating and testing it okay so let me close this again once again let me close everything okay so before generating neural network first thing that you need is this weights and biases file so first step you need to do a software based training for getting this weights and biases then only we can start building the hardware okay so that part uh, let me bring those files also here so we have this file gen weights and biases and gen test data right so we need this one or if you are using tensorflow you can generate it from there also weights and biases but for input data generation uh, test data generation you definitely need this file gen test data dot py okay so i am taking this entire script and I am bringing it to our latest tutorial here. So first thing I am going to do is train the neural network. So this time let's use a totally different configuration. Let's say like 784, 30, let's say uh, 20, 10. We are using a smaller network, okay? 30, 20, 10. And let's see how this one is going to perform so this is where we are starting so we do this and first step as you know is to run this script so we say python train neural network dot py and he will do 30 iterations and at the end of 30 iterations he will give us this weights and biases now, uh, one thing I want to modify there is the type of activation function. So remember that information is in network2.py. Let's use sigmoid. So I will come here and I will put this sigmoid one. This is relu one. So let me put sigmoid here. Okay. Now let's run. So I'll come back once he finishes the training part. Okay, so now training is completed. So if you go here, we have this file. Uh, weights and biases. It's wrong. Okay. Okay, anyway. So you take this one 
and next step is generating hardware so we need to delete these two folder the source folder and this one okay and use that here weights and biases and remember to change these To match with whatever we put here so it is 30 20 10 so it is 30 20 10 keep the hot max there and this time let's use only data width as 8 okay and we run python mnis zainet p1 and wait for him to finish and generate our project so that's also done now let's go ahead and open the project okay so you can see there are three layers and it is 30 20 and 10 next is simulation so for simulation we have to generate that test data that's where we have to use the next script this gen test data dot py script for doing that and here you have to again properly specify the data width so the data width that you specify here should match with whatever data we use for generating the neural network then only it will work for properly so input in size is one uh, that is one data width is eight okay now uh, when you simulate it the test data should be inside the same folder of vivado now by default uh, that uh, directory structure is not there so let's just uh, run simulation once and he will now complain like he cannot find the uh, test data files in the same folder that is fine we just want him to create those folders so if you run the simulation now, he can you can see like he's complaining uh, he cannot open these these files, okay? Because they do not exist. So we want to generate those folders. So it is this folder. So the test data, the MI file, he automatically copies here. But the test data files, we will have to add them here, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this path and I am using that as the output path for generating my test data okay so you just copy it here here and just run python gen test data for py and we are generating all test data that means 10,000 so it will take a few minutes to generate all of them so we'll wait until that so that is also done now if you come back to that xm folder yeah you should be able to see this test data zero all the way to 9999 and in our test bench if you see We are just using first 100 samples to change it. So if you want to change this number, you can change it. If you are not changing it, you don't have to recompile it. You can just uh, restart your simulation and just run because we didn't change any source code. And you can see he is running. Oh, the accuracy is pretty good actually, uh, although we reduced the data size. Yeah, 99% accuracy so out of 100 images he correctly detected uh, 99 okay so this is the overall flow so for amnist it is pretty straightforward so as i mentioned before uh, the generation of neural network it is very generic it, it has nothing to do with amnist you can just specify your requirement and he will generate the neural network for you but the test bench is specific to MNIST in, in some sense. So if you are using other data, you have to 
uh, slightly modify it and this generator data that is also specific to mnet so if you are using some other images things like that you will have to use another script file to convert it into binary or text file those scripts uh, we have discussed before also so i hope uh, this will be useful to you maybe in next tutorial we will run this on hardware and see whether it really works on hardware also thank you